We'll now take a look at nutrition in animals and how it takes place. Nutrition in animals is broken down into complex food substances which are then taken in by an organism and broken down into simpler substances before they are absorbed and utilized. The non-utilized food is released in the form of waste products. Animals can be broadly classified into three categories. Herbivores that are plant eaten, carnivores those that eat meat, and omnivores that eat both plants and animals. If we look at the classification of the food eating types, it's stated here that herbivores are plant eaten, carnivores meat eaten, and omnivores that eat both. Let's take a look at what herbivores are. These strictly eat plants. They are also referred to as consumers. Different types of herbivores like goat, cattle, deer, rabbits, and humans referred to as vegetarians or vegans also rely on plants or fruits for their diet. Carnivores are referred to as meat-eating organisms. Their diet is strictly based on food from animals that feed on plants. They are referred to as secondary Consumers, humans, lions, dogs, fish like the piranha or the barracuda, sharks, and certain birds like eagles and vultures are classified as carnivores. Omnivores, this group of organisms eat both plants and animals for their survival. They are higher in the hierarchy of the food pyramid and are called tertiary consumers. Humans, bears, and certain types of birds are some types of omnivores. The diagram will give us an example of the different types of herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. Have a look at the herbivores, the carnivores, and the omnivores. Now, we will look at how nutrition takes place and what are the different steps or processes. It starts with ingestion, which is the taking in of food, which we refer to as chewing before swallowing. Digesting food, which is breaking it down into smaller substances. Absorption, where the broken down food in smaller substances is now carried from one part of a body to the next. Assimilation where this food that has been absorbed is utilized for growth and repair of bones or muscles. And ejection where unwanted or waste products are removed from the body. What is ingestion? We know that energy is very vital and essential for the development of our body. And to carry out the daily activities, whether it be internally or externally, the body needs food. And energy comes from this food that we ingest, which is also referred to as eating food. So we can say that ingestion is just the physical aspect where food is chewed and swallowed. Digestion is when the food that has been taken into the body is, an in, is an, in an insoluble form. So when after swallowing, it is mixed with digestive juices. This here now becomes the chemical aspect because it is now broken down into a simpler form and made soluble for the body to absorb. Absorption is when the soluble food is carried to all the parts of the body. It all depends on what kind of an organism it is. It could be a single-celled or a multi-celled organism. Assimilation. The soluble food 
that's been carried to all parts of the body is now utilized to produce energy. That energy is required for making materials for growth and repair by the cells in the body. Ejection is when that waste product or all the unwanted, undigested food that is not required by the body or is of no use to the body is removed or we say ingested. Let's look at unicellular organisms, often referred to as single cell. Unicellular organisms like amoeba and paronesium are organisms that ingest and absorb food that floats in the water in which they live. This is referred to as phagocytosis or cell feeding. In multicellular organisms that are multicelled, like herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores, they have different glands and cells that help or constitute to the process of nutrition. As a result, they take in solid food. This is called holozoic mode of nutrition. Let's look at how nutrition takes place in a single-celled organism like an amoeba. If you look at the diagram in front of you, you will notice that the amoeba has a body that comprises of pseudopodia, often referred to as finger-like projections or false appendages. It has a nucleus which helps it to basically think like our brain, a cytoplasm that surrounds the internal structure of the amoeba, and the vacuole, which is an empty space. Now, what takes place? Food is ingested. It is taken in the form of enzymes that enter into the food vacuole. So diagram one and two show how the food is trapped and enclosed now within a food vacuole. Absorption takes place where all the food material is absorbed and then the digested food is diffused out within the cytoplasm of the amoeba. Due to this, assimilation takes place and the amoeba, amoeba grows up in size. Whatever item or food material not required is now ingested, meaning undigested food is actually removed from the body of the amoeba. Let's take a look at this. Ingestion is when the amoeba takes in its food. Now the amoeba has no mouth, so no entry point and no exit point for food to enter and to exit. So as a result, the food is surrounded or engulfed first of all by the finger-like projections called pseudopodia, which trap it and engulf the food item with a little bit of water, forming a food vacuole or you could call it a temporary stomach. This means that the appendages suck in more or less the organism and digest it. Digestion now takes place inside the food vacuole with the help of enzymes that come in from the surrounding cytoplasm. And these are now broken down into small soluble molecules and dissolved into the food vacuole. Once di digestion has taken place, absorption occurs. The digested food is directly absorbed into the cytoplasm and then the absorbed food spreads out freely throughout the amoeba. The food vacuole disappears after the food has been absorbed. Assimilation is that part that takes place to obtain energy through a process called respiration. The remainder of the energy is used for the amoeba to grow in size. When it has successfully grown into a particular size, it can then reproduce by dividing into two 
cells. Ejection, as stated, amoeba has no fixed place to get rid of undigested food or waste, meaning it has no exit point. So when a considerable amount of undigested food accumulates and is not wanted and has to be got rid of, the cell membrane of the amoeba ruptures at any part and the waste is discarded. I hope you have enjoyed the presentations. If you'd like to see more presentations, you can always visit us on our website at www.arrangeacademy.com. Furthermore, for a subscription, you could always check us out on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash arrangeacademy. You can subscribe to us also on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash Academy. Thank you.